In this short video, we're going to talk about two important ideas. The first one, called the dot product, is actually an operation that can be performed with two vectors. And the second idea comes from the dot product. It's the notion of orthogonality. That would be the equivalent idea of perpendicular when we're talking about geometry. So let's start with the dot product. It has a definition based on two operations. You're given two vectors, and you're going to perform two operations to form a single scalar output. The first operation is to form the product of the corresponding components. So I'll form u1 times v1, u2 times v2, and so on up to un times vn. And then the second part is after you form those products, you add them all together. And the output then is a scalar. So you started with two vectors, but your output is a scalar. And that's what we call the dot product. Sometimes it's called the scalar product too. And then later on, we'll learn that it can be called an inner product as well. So let's just look at an example. I have two vectors, u and v, from four space. And I'm going to form their dot product. So I'll start with the product of the first components, then the product of the second components, product of the third components, and the product of the fourth components. Then I'm going to add those products up, and I get an answer of 5. Now, a few notes. In, in particular, if you have uh, taken another class in linear algebra or multivariable calculus, you may see a dot used rather than a small circle to represent the dot product. But in this course, we really want to emphasize the difference between multiplication by scalars and the dot product. So we're going to use this small circle to represent the dot product and reserve the actual dot for scalar multiplication. And then here's a super, super important idea, is that we know that by definition, the length of the vector, the length of a vector, is the square root of the sum of the squares of the components. Well, the sum of the squares of the components is the same as taking that vector v and dot it with itself. I would have v1 times v1 plus v2 times v2, and so on, up to vn times vn. Well, that is the sum of the squares, which means that there's this super important and super useful relationship between the length of a vector and the dot product of the vector with itself. So the length of a vector squared is the same as the dotting the vector with itself. And as a consequence, if you have a unit vector, then if you dot a unit vector with itself, uh, the dot product is going to be 1. So some important properties of the dot product. Dot product looks like uh, multiplication. It has many uh, properties that it shares with scalar multiplication. So for example, it is commutative. The order in which you form the dot product does not matter. It will give you the same answer. It has distributive part properties. So in other words, if you have v plus w inside parentheses and you dot u, either from the left or from the right, uh, you can distribute the dot product uh, across the vectors inside the parentheses. Uh, you have this idea of homogeneity. We're going to see this word homogeneity throughout the course, and it means you can factor out a scalar. Uh, now we have to start to be careful. It is true that if you take the dot product of any vector with the zero vector, the answer is going to be the scalar, zero. But we're going to see that if the dot product is zero, that does not mean that one of the vectors has to be zero. Now. As a result of the important property that we talked about 
previously that the length of a vector is the dot bot dot square root of the dot product of the vector with itself. Uh, then if you take a non-zero vector and dot it with itself, well, non-zero vector has non-zero length, so the dot product of a non-zero vector with itself has got to be positive. And it can only be zero when, now this is when you dot a product vector with itself, the dot product of a vector with itself, not with another vector, but taking u and dotting it with u can only equal zero when u equals zero. And again, that goes back to the fact that the zero vector is the only vector with length zero. Now, if we put some of those properties together, if we uh, use, for example, the distributive property twice, we get this extended distributive property. So if I take the dot product of a pair of vectors with itself, you can use this idea of FOIL. If you've heard about FOIL, I take the dot product of the first vectors, add that to the dot product of the outside vectors, add that to the dot product of the inside vectors, and then add that to the dot product of the last. So you'll get four terms. Now two of these terms are the same because of the commutative property. u dotted with v is the same as v dotted with u. So those are like terms. So I can go ahead and collect those like terms. So important note here. We talked about this previously, but there should be never, 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 never an exponent on a vector. It just simply makes no sense at all. If you put vector and then put squared, that is completely meaningless and will be penalized. In particular, that is not a shorthand for saying you dotted with you. You want to say you did I, you dotted with you, write it out. Or you could replace it with the length of u squared. Length of u is a scalar. And of course, you can put exponents on scalars. All right, so let's look at an example where we use some of these products or properties with the dot product. So what I'd like to, to find is the length of 4u plus 3v. And what I'm given is that I know something about the length of u. It's 2. The length of v is 5. And I know uh, something about the dot product. u dotted with v is negative 3. All right, so we're going to start a lot of these questions that deal with the length of a sum of vectors or difference of vectors by going back to this product. We're going to square that. Why? Because the length of a vector square is the same as the dot product of the vector with itself. And that's going to be the best way to approach these types of problems. So we start with squaring that length of 4u plus 3v. And that would be the vector 4u plus 3v dotted with itself. And let's go ahead and use FOIL on that. And we can collect the like terms. And we can change the u dot u to the length of u squared. That will help us because we know something about the length of u. And we can change v dot v into the length of v squared because we know the length of v. And in fact, we know u dot v. So now we know all of the unknowns in this expression here. So I can go ahead and make those substitutions. And that gives me 217. Now that's the length of 4u plus 3v squared. So in order to find the length of 4u plus 3v, we'll just take square roots of both sides. And we find that it's going to be radical 217. Now let's do a little review from pre-calc here. We're interested in our trigonometry. Uh, 
we've got a general triangle and uh, we've labeled the sides a b and c the length of each side is a b c theta is the angle between a and b or across from c and we'd like to have a formula connecting um, theta a and b to c now if theta were a right triangle or theta were pi over 2 i'm sorry uh, so this were a right triangle then we know that a squared plus b squared equals c squared but here theta is just some general angle it could be acute it could be obtuse it could be uh, a right angle well let's see if we can figure out how to get an equation i think what we'll do is we'll start by taking our triangle and drop, dropping an altitude. So just a, a helper line here from the peak down to the base, which is perpendicular to the base. The length of that is going to be called h. And then we're going to break up the side labeled b into two parts, b1 and b2, because this altitude breaks up our general triangle into two right triangles. So I should be able to use important information from triangle trig, for example, or the Pythagorean theorem. So I'm going to start with my triangle trig and say that uh, h, the height here, is going to be the same as a, and a in this a triangle on the left, A is the length of the hypotenuse of that right triangle. So uh, hypotenuse times sine theta. B1 is hypotenuse times cosine theta. And then in the triangle on the right, I can use the Pythagorean theorem that just says that C squared is H squared plus B2 squared. Now h squared, I just said, is a sine theta. So let me make that substitution. b2 is just the same as taking b and subtracting b1. And why would I do that? Because I want to make use of the fact that b1 is a times cosine theta. So let's make that substitution. And we'll go ahead and use FOIL, square this binomial here, and I'll get my three terms, b squared minus 2ab cosine theta plus a squared cosine squared theta. So notice that I have an a squared sine theta, I mean, sorry, a squared sine squared theta, and an a squared cosine squared theta. If I add those together, I can factor out the a squared and inside parentheses, I have sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta, which is one of our principal identities. That's going to equal 1. And so what's left over when I replace sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta with 1, I get that c squared is a squared plus b squared minus 2ab cosine theta. So that's our law of cosines. Nothing new. We just took a little extra time to derive it. So how does that apply to vectors and the dot product, which is what we're studying here? So let's draw a triangle. We're going to take two vectors, u and v, put them tail to tail. Theta is the angle between them. And then if I go from the head of u to the head of v, that's the same as going in the opposite of u and in the same direction of v. So the opposite of u would be minus u plus v. So minus u plus v is the same as v minus u. So we've got our law of cosines. And now the side, the length of the side in this triangle opposite theta would be the length of v minus u and that says that the length of a would be the length of u and the length of b would be the length of v so we're just going to take these lengths vector lengths and substitute them in the law of cosines
And we're going to see if we can simplify this. Well, how do we simplify expressions that have the length of u or v minus u squared? We're going to write that as the dot product of v minus u with itself. And let's go ahead and use FOIL with that. Now notice that v dotted with v is the same as the length of v squared. u dotted with u is the same as the length of u squared. So I can subtract the length of u squared from each side, the length of v squared from each side, and I'll be left with one term on each side on the left, I have negative 2 times u dotted with v. And on the right, I have negative 2 times the length of u times the length of v cosine theta. So I can divide both sides by negative 2 and get the following connection between the dot product and the angle between the vectors. That is, or the cosine of the angle between the vectors. That u dotted with v is the length of u times the length of v times cosine theta. Or I could solve for cosine theta if uh, neither u nor v is the zero vector. And I would get that u uh, cosine theta is u dotted with v over the length of u times the length of v. That's a very super important formula. So think about it. What this tells us is that the dot product is proportional to the cosine of the angle between the two vectors. So, for example, if uh, the dot product is positive, then cosine of theta has to be positive, which means that theta has to be an acute angle. And on the other hand, if theta is an acute angle, cosine theta has to be positive, and the dot product has to be positive. And just a reminder, uh, what is an acute angle? Acute angle is an angle that's uh, larger than 0 and smaller than 90 degrees, or larger than 0 radians and smaller than pi over 2 radians. And the same idea with negative. If the dot product is negative, then uh, that means cosine of theta has to be negative, which means the angle has to be obtuse. And the other direction is true. If the angle is obtuse, then cosine of theta has to be negative, and the dot product then would have to be negative. And again, as a reminder, obtuse means larger than 90 but smaller than 180 degrees or in terms of radians, larger than pi over 2, but smaller than pi radians. Well, what about when the dot product is 0? Here we have to be a little bit more careful, right? Because the dot product is the product of these three scalars, the length of u, the length of v, and the cosine of theta. So if the dot product is 0, it could be that the length of u is 0 which would mean that uh, u would be the zero vector. Or it could be that the length of v is zero, in which case v must be the zero vector. Or it could be that cosine of theta equals zero, which means that theta is 90 degrees or pi over two radians. So if the dot product is zero, we're going to define the word orthogonal as being the uh, description of those two vectors. We say that u and v are orthogonal to each other, provided that u dotted with v is 0. So this is uh, has the same meaning in Euclidean space as perpendicular, what we learned in geometry. So. Um, According to this definition, the zero vector is orthogonal to every vector in Rn. And because of the dot product will always be zero, which means that this zero vector is indeed a very 
unique vector because not only is it parallel to every vector, it's also perpendicular to every vector. So I'm going to stop here and create a second video uh, regarding uh, two important inequalities that come out of this dot product and how we can look at our planes using dot products and orthogonality.